we used questionnaires in our international classroom um, to have an overview which kind of learning activities our students like the most when we promote international learning. Um, it's mixed learning, so in some ways they are physically in the same area, um, but also in other projects they need to connect uh, with students uh, who are residents um, of Cambodia or Ecuador or uh, South Africa. What we learned is that students uh, really appreciate when you have a wide range of sources uh, and you can only get them by getting in touch with the other professors, with the other lecturers on the same topic. So you share sources and you give like a wide overview of different materials. Um, for us, it's important to keep in mind the idea of universal design of learning. Uh, it means that, for instance, we offer a podcast, we offer a video, um, they can uh, analyze a drawing or um, uh, they can uh, watch a small video. So the learning activities and the materials are organized in a different way. Um, also, our students actually uh, like to do group work in class, not outside class, so in an online or in a physical class. Uh, but important is that there is a safe place. It means that there is room for reflection beforehand to know uh, well their concerns. Sometimes their concerns are insecurities about their own language capacities or um, sometimes content based as well, or they feel a bit intimidated. So beforehand, it's important to initiate and to uh, give the students um, uh, a safe space uh, and as well to uh, organize a reflection afterwards to know what are their um, what are their concerns and do they have ideas to optimize next time when we go further on this. Um, so these are small things we experience in classroom that are helpful to organize uh, in an inclusive way international learning. Uh, more on an institutional uh, level or uh, program level, it's I think very useful for a lecturer, for a, uh, someone who is teaching that he or she has also some help in ICT, in tools, but not only in the technical part, in the, in a, in, in the perfect world, uh, there is also help in didactical sense, in what do I, what can I use, what kind of tools I can use, but also in, in our uh, subject of inclusion. Uh, it's, it's difficult to find people all in one, all these aspects in one person, but it should be included in a, in, in the management or in the in the support part. That it's not only technical, technical, but it's also other aspects uh, with with uh, help. I would like also to mention some uh, thing. I feel it's important in a micro uh, level, just in the human part. I think generalizing, sorry for that, we as Europeans have sometimes to learn to, to communicate with uh, people from other countries within each other, within Europe, but also with uh, outside uh, Europe. Um, this is a European, European prog program. And then it's, it's about social, basic social skills to greet well, to feel that the, to feel each other, to, to make feel well, people making feel well, and to taking into account who is there at the other side of the screen. I like your background, uh, Ivana. I like the background from, from, from uh, Anik. You are talking a bit with me, uh, and I have only these puzzles, but it's very nice to keep in mind not only your face, but also. What are you showing to your students? Uh, there's a nice example of uh, Yale University. One of the most popular online courses is the science of well-being. And that is in a living room with some students from different backgrounds. And the teacher, the professor is, is 
talking with these students and you feel like participating as you are in a seat as a student participating in, in this uh, situation, that's meant to be a, a, a lecture about a program about well-being. And it's a very nice, nice thing to, to see that. Um, if I have, and you can cut later on, but I have another example. Uh, a professor of the U University of Ghent showed me uh, his uh, program, and it's all it's a, a program that's very uh, individualized. Um, the only thing he is creating is a, a kind of a semi structure, semi open way of learning online. And it's very nice. Let's uh, say he, he, he has like three or four competences defined. And he says to his students, well, you have to prove, you're responsible to prove if you have, if you have these competences. And the way they, they do it, they have to make, make, they have to decide themselves. That's what Anik just said about uh, various tools. I think it's, it's possible to find ways. You have to prepare it with the, with certain, together with, with the participating people, with a lot of involvement. But whenever you have some construction that is a very open and closed uh, way of teaching and learning, it could bring you very far. If you say uh, people can prove their competences in the way they want to prove it, uh, is it a movie, is it a podcast, is it a, by social media, whatever, but you have to prove it yourself, it would be a, a step forward, I think, because you can learn everywhere. You can learn from everything. You can learn whenever or where you want, and uh, not only online, but also online, it gives possibilities to, to learn in an individualized uh, uh, trajectory. Um, I think uh, what is important as well as lectures, we are the ones who are organizing the international learning and uh, we are in charge and we try to do that in an inclusive way. Um, but like Stein mentioned earlier, it's important and it's very inspiring um, to have like a community and to be part of a community of other lecturers uh, where you can share ideas, where you can also explain your own mistakes uh, without uh, being judged, uh, but just um, uh, being understood. And it's a way to be reflective on your own teaching practice and to grow as a person and as a professional. 